And I fly up north most every day And I fly, it's always been my way Hi, my name's Dave Hadfield and I'm here with this Fairchild 24 which my wife and I have owned since 2008 and uh, keep going in Alliston, Ontario and I'm going to take the thing flying in this gorgeous spring day. So that helmet cam I'm looking at <laughs> is on my helmet and I'm going to put it on. And I'm going to walk you through the start procedure for this Fairchild 24W. And it has, I checked the mags are off already, it has a Warner 185, Warner 185K. And uh, that gives you 185 horsepower if you get to 2175 RPM, which it never does. Or even 200 horsepower if you got to 2475 RPM. Not possible. This engine, the late model, the K model, has this oil line so that you could run a constant speed prop. Uh, but I'm just running the sense and it's doing the job okay for me. So there's a bit of an oddball start procedure on this thing. And uh, let me walk it, uh, walk you through it. So the first thing to do is pull it over a bunch of times to make sure we don't have a hydraulic lock and to pull some fuel into the carburetor. So it's got fuel selector, fuel tanks in both wings, so that one's off and this one's on. Okay, that's good. The spark is retarded a little bit and I'll talk about that more later. Throttle's idle, mixture's rich, and the uh, mags are off. I'm gonna pull it through 10 times just to bring a little gas into the system. I got it shocked, and even though the mags are selected off, we always treat them like they're hot because, of course, you can never shut a mag needle off. All you can do is ground it. And if there's a problem with the grounding, it'll run no matter what. It's a little different to pull through a radial, of course. We don't pull this through hard because if you do have a hydraulic lock, I don't want to bend a connecting rod. But just nice and steady, and make sure that oil is not flooded one of these lower two cylinders and blocked the piston and caused a hydraulic lock. That's definitely the case. On this particular airplane, I've modified it. And onion, <laughs> it's all oily under here, but there's a hole that I'm put into this cowling here and a quick drain on the bottom two cylinder heads leads into a manifold. I can put an oil can up there and drain the cylinder heads during the uh, night, you know, when the thing's not flying. And that way oil doesn't uh, creep from that direction into one of the lower cylinders. So that's all good. Now we'll prime it. And uh, there's no individual cylinder prime in a Warner. All you're doing is squirting gas right into the intake manifold. It works okay, but it's a little different. And it's got an old-fashioned Lunkheimer primer down here. I hope you can see that. Uh, yeah, I should be able to. And this is not a shutoff valve. This is director valve. If this was a, an old-fashioned, um, oh, I don't know, Cessna crane, or Bobcat, uh, you could direct where the prime went to one, two, or three engines with one of these valves. So this is a 1947 original iPhone 5. Yes. Okay, so I'm giving it... Okay, one, two, five, maybe six, because it's a cool morning. I had to preheat the oil. And I'll leave it open in case I need it after start. So right now the intake manifold, the big round um, compartment behind the cylinders, has got bunch of gas sprayed into the bottom of it. So I'll give it three, three intake strokes. I'll give it one more. Four intake strokes to suck some gas into the cylinders. Give it a minute or two to atomize. Forget the chocks. Not easier to taxi without chocks. Fairchilds, of course, have some interesting features. Tip-up seats. 
got a lot of room in the back, but enough. It's not a pure four-seater, but it has big gas tanks too, so with half tanks you can take four people. It has roll-up windows. This is cool. You keep a little tension on the latch so the, the band stays tight, and then you can lower the old windows. They weigh a ton, and they're out of some 1930s car. I've heard Pontiac, I've heard Studebaker. Anyway, that's going to be up for takeoff. So it's now primed, chocks are away, walk around's complete, and we're ready to go. This airplane was restored in the 70s and kind of looks like it. However, it's still serviceable. Kind of nice to be able to reach through here and grab the strut when you're getting in and out. This was a 1947 24W46, one of the last ones built. This one was built by Temco in Texas. They took over a bunch of manufacturing from other original companies right after World War II. Right, so the master goes on and uh, throttle, just a tiny crack, hardly anything. Fuel has definitely been on. Now this is the spark retard. This thing did not have an impulse mag for retarded spark. And, uh, but we definitely don't want kickback because that can shear off a starter tooth and drop that into the general oil system and then it's game over. That means uh, a lot of problems. So we retard the spark manually with this thing um, as if it's a Model T or something like that. And then I'm going to uh, engage the starter, give it two blades, and then turn the magnetos on. Clear! Hold brakes. And she goes. Oil pressure is good right away. Give it a little prime with a little bit of throttle. Sometimes if you let them idle too low, the lower plugs foul. I want the lower plugs that tend to foul anyway, if they're at the bottom and oil collects there. I want them to start working as soon as possible. Back to advance. And we're good. Whoa. The barometer's been dropping. Trim. Let's pull up. Pull down. As for takeoff, we call it the wrong way trim for obvious reasons. All right, I'm going to taxi out there now for a couple minutes and it's warmed up. And, uh, and then we'll take off to the south runway 18 in Allen. Okay, we've done the run up check. We've done the before takeoff check all through it. We're all set to go. Alliston traffic, Echo Kilo Charlie rolling 1-8 left turn. No one there. Off we go. Warner is super loud once the power comes up, so I'll switch to voiceover. In fact, let's run that whole takeoff again with comments. Takeoff technique is standard. Stick hard back, power up smoothly, keep it straight. Count three Mississippis and then raise the tail, but not too much. On a grass strip, just a few inches and then let it fly off. Fairchild is typical of the 1930s for takeoff performance, but not exceptional. It has split flaps, and they're mostly drag. During this initial climb out, I turn gently to the right to avoid that farmhouse and the trees and make that farm field a little more accessible if the engine quit.
Once we're nicely away, I bring the power back. Parts for a Warner engine are really hard to find, so I pick a high cruise power setting as soon as practical. In a Fairchild 24, you can feed from one tank or the other, but not both. So here I'm switching tanks. And I try to do that where, if the fuel transfer failed, I'd have a good chance of making a successful emergency landing. Well, there is Edenvale Aerodrome. And the plan is to join overhead, do a left-hand circuit, and land on runway 13. Look at all those lovely new hangars. The owner, Mr. Milan Krupa, has made a tremendous investment in general aviation. So my objective here is to not shock cool the engine. I want to preserve this thing, not have to scrounge more parts for it. So I've reduced the power, but leave some on for gradual cooling. Below 80 miles an hour, I select the first notch of flap. And keep the turn on to base fairly close. I don't like dragging the airplane in on a long final. With an old engine, I don't like to jockey the throttle. So I pick a point on base that looks about right, then bring the power back to an approach setting, and try not to change it until we're over the threshold. In fact, on this approach, after some significant engine work during the winter, I opt to leave the power alone and side slip off some extra height. A bit like keeping some money in the bank. The Fairchild 24 is a sweetheart, but I should probably not play with the windows until we're on the taxiway. Although it is nice to stick your elbow out. Anyway, like in most of these tail draggers, I don't jump on the brakes. I just let it roll. nice day here at Edenvale. Wind was right down the runway. Didn't embarrass myself too much. A couple airplanes, one on final, one taxiing out. There's a Fairchild Cornell from the Edenvale Classic Aircraft Foundation. I got a little time in that airplane. And over there is David Granger's collection. BT-13 and a Myers OTW. I don't need gas, so I'll just park. Cylinder head temperatures are nice and low. Well, shut her down. Master, mags, fuel. Works for everything, even a Spitfire.
I've been up here for far too long But I still like what I see Cause I live here in the north And the north lives here in the north